So about a month and a half ago, I got an email from Leslie, who is the dynamic leader of TEDx Accra, asking me to speak at today's event. My first reaction was, what? I, I just knew that he had sent the email to the wrong person. I thought he meant to send it to Mami Abuafo, who is my co-star in an African city and is actually on the cover of the booklet today. She spoke at TEDx Accra two years ago and was dynamic and fabulous. There was no way this email was meant for me. So I immediately flipped open my laptop to respond to Leslie's email. I specifically wanted to send this email from my laptop because I wanted to make sure that my signature and my full name showed up at the end of the email so he was clear that he had sent this email to Mami Ajay. After a few hours, I was horrified when he responded and said, nope, it's for you. I immediately went into panic mode. What could it benefit a group of what I expected to be dynamic, intelligent, creative men and women to hear me speak? What did I have to say? Leslie and I scheduled a, scheduled a Skype call and my first question to him was, why me? He gave me a slew of what seemed at the time to be great reasons why I was worthy to speak to you today. But by then, imposter syndrome had already set in. So imposter syndrome is described by Susan Imes, a psychologist, as the inability for high achieving individuals to internalize their accomplishments and a persistent fear of being exposed as a fraud. That was me. I was like, no, they're gonna find out. I can't speak, I can't act, I can't do anything. Then I started thinking about the theme of today's event. It's about time. It's about time. What would I even talk about under that theme? Okay, I could talk about my travel show, Girl Going Places, and how I adamantly believe that it's about time that us as Africans and people of the diaspora travel our own spaces, explore our own cities, visit our own countries and how knowing your own country in a physical sense is so deeply tied to who you are and your self-confidence. And I had experienced that firsthand while traveling Ghana. So I, I could talk about that, yeah. Or I could talk about how I felt it was about time that we start writing our own stories, telling our own narratives, especially as African women, sharing our views on the world like an African city, dispelling negative stereotypes about ourselves that we don't like. Yeah. I could talk about that. But everything in my body was telling me that the only thing I needed to talk about today was fear. I was scared. Over the last month, I have tried everything to not be here today. Every single thing. Every deadline that Leslie gave me to submit my talk, I missed. Intentionally. I was just waiting for him to send me an email and say, sister girl, sorry, you can't speak, you missed the deadline. I reached out to all my friends and family, just waiting for somebody to say, yeah, I mean, you know, you're doing your acting thing, it's cute. You're doing your producer thing, it's nice. But TEDx, no, 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 TEDx is, TEDx is Chimamanda. You know, TEDx is Brene Brown. Mommy, stay in your lane. This is not for you. Even, this is a true story, even up until last week, I was trying to change my ticket to extend my already eight-week stay in the States so that I would have a legitimate reason to miss this event strapped with fear. Then I thought about the moments in my life that I had had intense courage. The moments that I was forgetting about. At 14, I left my mother and decided to live with my father. 
it was a complete awakening for me because it was the first time that I realized that my mother had built this amazing fence, this comfortable life, that I relied on her for every single thing, especially emotionally. All of a sudden, I had decided to move to another country to live with my father, who at that time, I just hadn't spent a lot of time with. But I believed deeply that it was about time that I pursued a relationship with him. So I did it. No fear. At 17, I decided that Temple University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania was the only university that I wanted to go to. I had no extended family there, no aunties, no uncles. Basically, if I went to Philadelphia, I would be on my own. Couple that with the fact that my mother had no idea how she was going to pay this $20,000 a year, four years tuition. Even finding the money to secure my spot at Temple and my housing at Temple was a problem. But I did it. No fear. Four years ago in September 2012, I came to Ghana for a two week vacation. And by the time I was leaving, I knew it was time to move back home. I went back, packed everything I own, cooking pots, my fridge, ceiling fan, everything. I took everything with me. And by December 1st, I was back in Ghana. Against the advice of my family, my friends, my mother. I had a set life in Philly. I had a house, I had a car, I had a decent job. I had a kind of, sort of, not really boyfriend. <laughs> and I had no idea what I was going to do when I came back to Ghana. What was I going to do career-wise? No idea. But I felt so deeply that it was time for me to come back and so into my country, but more importantly, so into myself. And I knew that this was the only place I could do that. So I did it. No fear. These are three pivotal moments in my life. Each moment is so layered that I couldn't go into it with you today. But they are critical in restructuring who I was and creating who I am today. I say all of this to say that fear, fear has an uncanny ability to just rear its ugly head at the very moment that is critical to your expansion as a human being. So, it's about time you push fear aside. I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to my shaky hands, my shaky feet, my sweaty face. (laughs) It's about time. It's about time you silence that voice of doubt. How many times have you heard that voice of doubt in your head tell you that you are incapable and unworthy? And you have mistaken that voice of doubt for voice of reason. It's about time that you pursue your goals and your passions vigilantly. It's about time that you make a decision that the only path you're going to be on is one that is in pursuit of what is on your heart to fulfill in this lifetime, in this only lifetime we have. It's about time you send that email, go to that audition, apply for that job, reach out to John Benjamin looking for a job, he has one for you. (laughs) It's about time. The only thing that's stopping us from achieving our greatest heights is fear, which means the only thing that's stopping us is ourselves. So just as I said to myself a month and a half ago when I got that email from Leslie, just as I said to myself a few weeks ago when I attempted to find a topic to talk about today, just as I've been saying to myself for the last three or four hours that I've been sitting back here, Mommy, a jwa, a jbewa. Yes, that's my full name. I sent to the core, represent. <laughs> just as I've been saying to myself for these last few weeks, I say to you, everyone here, younger than me, or very much younger than me, older than me, and very much older than me. No fear. No fear. Get out of your own way, because it's about time. 
Thank you.